Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this EPIC Essential Oil Science webinar. I'm Jared Warburton, Director of Marketing for the Americas Region, and uh, we're inching closer and closer to the launch of our new EPIC Essential Oils, and we are definitely feeling the excitement and anticipation for these amazing new products. And now on the call today, uh, we're going to talk about the science that goes into our EPIC Essential Oils. We're also going to cover the scientific methods and the tests that we perform to deliver the very best, highest quality oils to you. And I'm very pleased to have with me today one of our new skin scientists, Doug Stevenson. Uh, Doug is the director of chemistry R&D for New Skin. And for more than 20 years, Doug has worked in the natural products and nutritional supplements industry. And during his time, he participated in activities ranging from natural products, method development, to product formulation, and also in implementing and maintaining good manufacturing and good laboratory practices. Now, additionally, he has been an integral part of the development team for the scanner. So a lot of Doug's work has gone into scanner development through the years. He currently manages the R&D labs in Shanghai, China, and in Provo, Utah. And the activities these laboratories perform involve natural product method development and analysis, product formulation, ingredient discovery, and clinical research. And Doug holds a master's degree in chemistry from the Colorado School of Mines and a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Utah State University. And Doug, we're, we're very excited to have you on the call with us today. Welcome. Thank you, Jared. It's good to be here. Uh, this is a, a fun time to, uh, to be here and to talk about this new line of products that we're ready to introduce. And it's an interesting line of products because uh, as, as I've had experience in the natural products industry, as, as you said, for over 20 years, the challenges that are faced in the essential oil industry are nothing new. There are challenges that we've been dealing with with uh, dietary supplements for a long time. And in fact, this is a problem that's been around for uh, almost as long as people have been keeping records. Um, there's this long history of, of challenges to the purity of products. And so what we're about to face as we move into this arena is nothing new. So one of the things that we have focused on is how can we address these issues and how can we ensure that the products delivered are what you as a consumer want to have. Okay, so in 24 BC, in uh, Ebla, there's a community that um, they had concerns as well. In these tablets that were found, it was a, an archeological dig and they found tablets that described the king sending out teams of inspectors to the olive groves, to the mills, to ensure that the olive oil that they were purchasing was of a high quality and not intentionally adulterated or contaminated in any way. And so even as early as 24 BC, this was a problem. Now the Romans, they also had some challenges as well. And uh, there was a discovery made of uh, 25 million amphorae that held almost 2 billion liters of olive oil. On, the, on each of these amphorae were these tituli picti that are basically uh, titles of authenticity. So they had the same concerns as well. They sent teams of individuals out to go to the growers, to go to the manufacturing sites, to follow the process through, and then they sealed these olive oil uh, amphorae to ensure that their integrity was intact. Now, for us, we, we have some of the same challenges in that in this industry currently, there are shortages of raw materials. And so as we address these concerns, uh, we need to look at how we can uh, ensure that you as a consumer are receiving the proper oil. Now there are those who are unethical who want to make a quick buck who will substitute um, either other oils or ingredients that are not suitable for use and sell them to an unsuspecting consumer. And 
this is happening at the present time as we've seen shortages of various oils in the industry. Now, as a consumer, it's very confusing to determine who has the level of quality that you can trust. There's many claims that are made as to the purity and the potency of these oils. And as a consumer, you need to know how can I judge that the oils that, that I'm purchasing are of a quality that I can trust. Now, we're not, you're not the only one who's concerned. Recently, the uh, FDA and FTC have stepped in and, and inserted themselves in this discussion and have sent some warning letters out to some companies saying that they've kind of gone over the line with regards to their statements and, and the claims that are made about the oils. For us, from the very beginning, we approached the creation of these oils and this, this project with the idea of ensuring that you have the highest quality and most integrity of the, the oils available to you. We worked diligently to find a reputable supplier that can add not only uh, a good supply chain, but they add value to their own processes and their own technical capabilities. Additionally, we ensure that they meet our own strict internal standards and address our concerns appropriately. We do this through our success process. So for Pharmanex, uh, we've been using the success process for a long time and, and dealing with nutritional uh, sources of raw materials is nothing new to us. And so we've paid attention to those critical parameters that we have been paying attention to in the supplement world for a long time. And that helps us ensure that we have a high quality uh, oil that the, what you're receiving is exactly what we say it is. For example, we selected oils primarily for their sensory experience for you. However, there's other factors that are involved that we need to pay attention to. And those factors are often things that are not visible to you as a consumer, but we can determine those uh, quality levels through our analytical processes. So building on our knowledge and experience in botanicals, we've been able to work with our suppliers to ensure that these oils meet our own internal standards and testing criteria. So one of the first things we did is we selected a partner who's had extensive experience in essential oils. We also wanted to ensure that they had the technical expertise to meet our requirements in testing. In addition to those capabilities, uh, we also wanted someone who had the extensive experience in the organoleptic evaluation of those oils. Now, organoleptic is a, a word that some of you may be familiar with. What that is is someone who's expert in sensory evaluation of, of natural products. Uh, for the supplements that we have, those who are uh, experienced in looking at the odor, the color, and the appearance, and in the essential oils arena, the aroma profile is a, is a very important characteristic, and so those individuals that we partnered with have expertise in this area. Now, our own analytical capabilities allow us to do analyses of these oils that are not always available to others in the industry, in-house or if they try to achieve these, this level of expertise, it's often expensive and prohibitive and is not done. So what we do is, I think, reach a higher level of testing standard. We ask for evaluations and testing that's not common in the industry. For example, we require contaminant testing. Now, this is not usually performed by others in the industry because of its complexity and expense, but we feel, based on our experience, that this is a critical parameter that sets the oils apart. It's those trace levels of contaminants that often present challenges to the purity of the oils, and we want to ensure that we meet the highest level of purity and quality for these oils. We also work with our suppliers to ensure that the quality of the oils addresses some of the concerns that we've seen in the past. And so we utilize their own manufacturing expertise to address some concerns that we've had 
uh, with regards to these purity aspects. We place these products through the same level of testing that we require of all of our personal care products for safety as well. And this extensive testing ensures that you as a consumer can utilize these products and know that they're safe for you to use. We'd like to talk a little bit about those different types of testing. Many companies will just do a, a fingerprint, a GC fingerprint. And while that provides some good information, it's not always the most effective way to test a product. Because with GC, you don't know for sure what those peaks are. You only know their retention times. So we're requiring that, that we do, in addition to GC, we do a positive identification through mass spectrometry. What that allows us to do is each of those peaks elute on the gas chromatograph, we can do a positive identification and confirm that the peak is indeed what it purports to be. And we've had some experience demonstrating that this isn't always the case. There may be peaks that have uh, the right retention time but aren't the right uh, compound that we're looking at. We're testing for heavy metals and pesticides. Those are tests that uh, I mentioned earlier are commonly performed because they're, they're a little more complex. They're also uh, somewhat expensive to perform on a regular basis, but we feel that they're critical to establish the quality that we want to establish. Now, organoleptic evaluation, this is a, a critical area where those individuals who have an understanding of what's uh, required in the the aroma profile of an oil can help establish a uniformity from batch to batch. And if that experience isn't there, then sometimes you can have variations, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. There's also simpler tests such as specific gravity and refractive index. Now in sum, all of these tests represent a wide variety of testing. In the chemical world, we call that orthogonal testing. These tests provide ways of establishing purity that are not directly related to each other. And it allows us to independently verify the quality of the oils through a variety of techniques, not just relying on one analysis alone. As we were going through the selection process, uh, we had a particular lavender sample that was sent to us to evaluate. It wasn't from the supplier that we selected. Uh, it was purported to be of a quality that, that was suitable. And in fact, from an organoleptic point of view, it had all appearances that it was indeed a quality oil. However, when we examined it through GCMS, we were able to identify some distinct differences between the lavender that we wanted, a high quality Bulgarian lavender, and the lavender that we were asked to evaluate. It turns out that the, the sample that we received wasn't pure lavender. It was actually a material called lavendin. It's a close relative to lavender. It's less expensive. Uh, it has higher yields, therefore it's, uh, it is less expensive to use, and oftentimes it's added to a more expensive lavender to cause a lower price point for the raw material. And it can have a similar odor profile, but it is not the true Bulgarian lavender. One of the key indicators of this is the camphor peak that is present at about 10 to 15 minutes in the uh, chromatogram. The presence of that camphor is a clear indicator that lavender is present. Uh, well, naturally, we rejected this raw material and it allows, it allows us to ensure that the oils we're selecting for you are correct and of the correct purity. All right, so one of the next ones we looked at is where the experience of, of analysis and of organoleptic um, evaluation becomes critical. This is a material that was actually a competitor oil. And this particular oil, one batch smelled like peppermint should, and the next one didn't. And in the areas that I've highlighted here, there are subtle differences in the peak heights and ratios of the chemical compounds that are present in the essential oils. When you look at this chromatogram 
directly, they're not uh, clearly visible, but someone who's trained in this uh, analysis can evaluate the, the ratios. They can also uh, understand what the correct ranges are. And then someone who's also trained in evaluating the aroma profile, they also can evaluate this. And in this case, the aroma profile was clearly different. And in fact, uh, this uh, lot B may not have been peppermint at all. It may have been an, another mint that was errantly used instead of peppermint. So in conclusion, um, we strive to do testing that exceeds most of the industry in terms of their capabilities. We are striving to ensure that you as a consumer receive the ingredients that uh, we're claiming that we're delivering to you. And this comes through the extensive experience that we have in the natural products arena. Um, there are many challenges that, that we face in terms of purity and in terms of sourcing that our years of experience in dealing with botanicals and extract give us an advantage in assisting you as a consumer to receive the highest quality material that can be made available to you. And as we continue to uh, learn more in this industry, we can even uh, raise that bar higher and, and establish greater levels of quality and ensure that you receive continually high quality products. That's awesome. Thanks, Doug. This has been very informative, as I'm sure all of you feel. Um, just finding out more of, of everything that goes into testing for the quality and the, and the purity of our products. Clearly, New Skin goes above and beyond um, others out there to verify and ensure that we're delivering the very best to, to our customers. And it all falls back to that success quality process. Um, every step along that process ensures quality. And that's simply what we, we strive for each and every day. So thank you very much for being on the call. This has been great. My pleasure. So um, before we wrap up, I just want to give a few reminders. Um, we're all getting very excited for our limited sales opportunity, or LSO, of, April oil, of essential oils that will be happening on April 9th. Um, codes were sent out. The promotional codes were sent out on March 10th. And so if you've not received those codes, you still have an opportunity. And to get those, you need to qualify as an executive by the end of this month. And by doing so, that will allow you to receive codes. And the next round of codes will be sent out on April 8th, the day before our LSO. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, it's going to be an exciting day, and we're expecting to sell out very quickly. So make sure right at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, you get on uh, online and uh, purchase. There will be a link directly from our homepage, newskinusa.com, to, uh, to the LSO page so that you can log on and, and take advantage and get your order in as, as quickly as possible. We're also looking forward to our expos that start up next month. We'll be beginning the weekend of April 10th and 11th in Anaheim, California. And then uh, the following weekends in April and into May, we'll be visiting New York, Calgary, the Bay Area, and Miami. So make sure you mark those on the calendars. Those are going to be great events. And that will be the next opportunity to purchase Epic Essential Oils. We'll have our, pack, our LSO packages available at each of these expos as well. So if you didn't get a chance to, to purchase through the LSO, you'll have an additional chance to purchase at the expos. So thank you, everyone. Looking forward to a great launch and great events coming up, and we look forward to seeing you there. Take care and have a great day.